What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you know, I'm Fielding Shredder and today I'm going to teach you exactly how to reseal a diff. So a diff or a differential is in the back of the car and oftentimes it is leaky and gross. As you can see from the evidence of this one, it's important that your diff, you know, stay sealed. Obviously that keeps the fluids in and keeping the fluid in is when it's gonna keep this thing happy and working for many, many clutch kicks to come. So a couple of bit of the supplies we're gonna be using here. Got some paper towels. I've got some right stuff from Permatex. This is the best stuff ever. A wrench with a 14 mil, a razor blade for a scraper, and a roll of tape, which I'll show you can be used as a little trick here. So now you're obviously gonna need to pull the diff out of your car. That is a totally different video, which is a pain in the butt. Just find your strongest friend and have them help you. Once you get it out, get it on a bench like this and get your roll of tape. And you can see that I'm going to pick it up like this, but the nut is gonna keep it from sitting flush. So that's what this roll of tape comes in. Pick it up, put it on the tape, and there you go. Sits nice and sturdy in there, just like that. I'm gonna try and get this centered up. Oh man, it's hard. Oh good. Okay, so now the diff is there. Now you can rotate it and it's not gonna leak or anything and it's hopefully not gonna tip over when you mess with it. So you can see the backside here. We've got a lot of leaking going on. Whoever resealed it before did not do a very good job. Thank you very much, previous owner. <laughs> but that's all right, we can fix this. So just take your wrench or your socket. All right. So you can make sure that these are all, the threads and stuff are good. It's important to inspect all that when you pull these out. They're all, I believe, the same length, but if your diff at home has a different length bolt, make sure you keep in mind and pay attention what hole that goes in so you don't screw that up. You can see a bunch of icky stuff on here. Not a bad idea to hit these with a wire wheel to get all that excess old sealant off. And then depending on how good the previous owner sealed it, this may or may not just pop right off. So if it doesn't pop right off, there is an ear right here with a hole in it. You can just use that. Super simple to get it off. Now, be careful. This is aluminum, so it can crack very easily if it's, you know, really well glued on there. So you might kind of work it. You can put a little heat into it with a blowtorch if you want. But I found it's easiest just to kind of gently pry it up. And you can see how easy that came right off. Boom. What did they seal this with hot glue? What is that gross crap? All right, so step one, or step whatever step this is, get all the old crap off. So yeah, get all the old sealant off of there. So where your razor blade will come in handy. So you see that I'm doing this by hand? That's because I'm trying to be mindful about keeping stuff from falling in it. You know, you don't want anything really to fall in here. It's not gonna kill anything if a little piece gets in there, but really the less contamination, the better. Obviously a piece of this soft sealant is not gonna break any of these metal teeth off. However, it could contaminate the fluid by getting churned up and getting in there. And depending on what kind of diff you use, or you know, how much abuse you put on it and how often you change the fluid, that could be a bad thing for you. Now is also a great time to inspect the ring gear and inspect the actual differential, depending on what style you have. It might be a welded, it might be a clutch type, but you can just kind of look in here. If I spin this around, you can see that the ring gear is rotating. So I'm gonna spin that around several times, gently and just inspect it. If I see any missing teeth, now's the time to obviously replace it. All right, so that looks pretty good. Got all the junk off. Now you wanna do the same to the rear cover here. Same thing, just scrape all the way around here. I feel like this is some sort of like E6000 glue or some shit like that. If the razor blade's not working, get you something a little bit beefier. All right, so this is an important little step here. You guys can see 
there are these reliefs here in the rear cover. Now that's intended to hold some of that sealant and make sure that there is a good amount of it in between creating a good seal. So you wanna make sure to get the old stuff out of here. So just grab yourself a, a pick and just kind of work it in here. And you, you can also use a small flathead screwdriver, whatever you find that works for you around the shop. Uh, something with that kind of rounded radius shape is good. That's why I like a, a pick usually. But uh, essentially just get all that stuff out of there as best you can so that when you put the new sealant on there, it will be sure to work great. So you can totally tell that the previous guy did not do that because the sealant that's coming out of here is a completely different color and consistency from the crap that was gooped up onto here. But let's, that lets you know exactly if the guy before knew what he was doing or not. So I keep saying the guy before and you know that means obviously a previous owner, but if you know the guy I bought the car from, don't go and beat down his door, you know? It, it may not have been him. It could have been a previous owner. Who knows how many people worked on this car or owned it before him. So I just mean a previous owner of some level did not do their job. <laughs> all right, so that's more or less got it all cleaned out. You can decide how OCD you wanna be on this process here, but it's basically all gone. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that this is a machined surface, okay? So I would not recommend hitting this with a wire wheel as you might see some garage mechanics do. Um, maybe they've never had a problem or maybe they're using a steel cover and it's not a big deal, but on an aluminum cover with a machine surface, I would not do that. One other thing I wanna show you guys, while we have the back cover off, here's the drain plug. Now these are typically magnetic. So what they're intended to do is just catch any kind of filing or any metal shavings that maybe are coming off of the ring or pinion or the differential itself. Now on a welded diff, it's pretty common that you'll see a big buildup here, but what's important is that you guys clean this off. You see all that? That's all metal shavings coming off that aluminum, or sorry, the uh, magnetic drain plug. So, you know, you wanna get that cleaned off as best you can and start fresh so that any more metal shavings will have a really good chance of getting caught right there. It's also a good idea if you have a welded diff to change the diff fluid after the first event because again, that's when the most of the metal filings are gonna come off. So get that all nice and cleaned up. You can see there are lots of little bits of the sealant from scraping all around here. That's okay on the back cover because we're just gonna spray this off with brake cleaner. But on the pumpkin itself, that's when you wanna be careful not to let things drip or drop in there. All right, get yourself some brake cleaner, kind of spray this out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the drain plug out so I can make sure to clean it properly. So you see it's much cleaner now, still magnetic. And this is a good time to at least check the crush washer, if not replace it. These should be replaced every time, to be honest. But if you don't have one around, maybe just check it and clean it and you can put it back. Okay, this is more or less clean, but we're gonna hit it with some air to make sure there's absolutely no little fragments left behind. Depending on your rear cover, there may be more or less cracks and crevices and so forth. And do one last inspection back here to make sure that there's not something that could have maybe been gotten with a pick. Like back here. And Maybe one final wipe down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Our next step is get you some paper towel and clean the sealing surface really, really well. And I suggest you use a lint-free either shop towel like this, but you wanna try and get this as clean as possible and do the same for the diff cover. So you're gonna clean this diff cover. You see I'm holding it down here so I'm not holding it like this, putting all that grind back on the cover itself. One last wipe down before you put the new sealant. There you go. So now it's perfectly clean. Now is when I recommend maybe you clean your hands a bit. You can change out gloves or just wipe your hands down, whatever. Whatever you want to do. Oh, also, if you wanted to paint this rear cover, now would be a good time to do that. Make sure you mask it off properly and go ahead and paint it now. All right, next we're gonna grab our right stuff. This stuff is amazing. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. 
they just make a fantastic product. The, the, it's called the right stuff for a reason. Uh, what's nice about this is it doesn't take any real setup time. So if you're at the racetrack and you're like, crap, I need blew a diff, I gotta get a new one in, or, or literally any gasket, you put this stuff on, you bolt it on, and you go. You don't have to wait for it to dry or cure or, or anything like that. So that's a really huge benefit. Also, it just works fantastically. It sticks to everything, including things that aren't really that dirty. So it's, it's a drifter's best friend, let's just say that. Um, typically, I'll store it with a little nipple coming out, and so all you do is just pull that out, depending on how long it's been stored and what temperature. There we go. And then you turn this little guy and squeeze it, and boom, there you go. So now it's up to you where you want to put this. You can put it on the diff cover, or you can put it on the diff itself. Uh, I like to go a step further, and once it's on, I like to smear it around with my finger. So because I like to do that method, I'm going to do it on the cover so I can make sure that it gets into all of the little grooves. Pretty straightforward here. You're just going to squeeze a bead. It doesn't have to be a super thick bead, but not too small either. And then kind of go around the bolt hole on the pumpkin side or the inside. Like that. There you go. Wipe the tip and then again squeeze you out a little nipple and then undo that and just let it dry just like that so you'll have another one to pull out. All right so now from here some people will say just to slap it on and you're good to go but I am a little more OCD than that so I like to go through and just kind of give it some of these and what that does is ensures that it really is going to stick. So this might be an overkill step, uh, but I'm okay with that. And just kind of go around it. This also lets you kind of work it into the, the metal itself. And also know if you put too much in one area, you can kind of push it around. I should have turned my ringer off before filming this. So you notice I'm leaving it with all these little peaks and that is totally okay. That's good because it's gonna give it a nice surface to seal from. So you see how a couple, the first couple taps, there's a lot of gap here. In other words, it's not sticking to the entire face of the metal. So that's why I do this process. Again, it might be overkill. I've just always done it and I've never had anything not work when I use this product and this technique. So I'm just gonna stick with what I know. See that that one extra couple steps doesn't really take that much time but I really think it makes a big difference okay now on here I'm just gonna take this sticky finger and just put a really thin coat and again what I'm trying to do is make sure that the right stuff adheres nicely to the metal now you notice I'm taking from the diff cover and I'm putting it onto here that's because I have plenty of the the product. I don't need to squeeze any more. You don't want too much because then it'll leak into the diff. And again, it's not a major issue, but it's just, you don't need to do it. So again, the reason I'm doing this, this tapping method is to really make sure it's going to adhere to that metal. And if it wasn't going to, then it would kind of pick up at this point. Now that I know it's a hundred percent, Wipe my finger off. Next step, obviously install a cover. Make sure that you do it in the right orientation. Oftentimes these are symmetrical bolt patterns and you could put it in upside down on accident. So try not to do that because you don't want to redo all this. All right, this is the bottom. So that means it's going to get the drain plug. It's probably not a bad idea to mark it, but there you go. You want to go right on as straight as possible. Just like that, just let it sit. You don't need to push down on it or anything like that. If you need to slide it around a little bit to make sure the bolt holes line up, now's a good time to do that. Okay, so now here's where the right stuff is really much better. Normally, if it was silicone, you would have to just let it sit or set up or cure, whatever phrase you wanna use. But essentially, before you put pressure on it, you need to let it kind of dry a bit. 
so that when you do clamp it down with the bolts, it doesn't just squish out and there's no more gasket material. Uh, this stuff, apparently you don't have to do that. Now, uh, I still kind of do. So I'm gonna just hand feed the bolts in. I'm gonna take my time and I'm not gonna rush this process. You know, if you wanna put Loctite on these, you can. If you wanna put a little bit of the Pookie on here with the right stuff with the silicone, the sealant, you could do that if you want. I know for sure that this is not gonna leak, so I'm not really gonna worry about that too much. And I just, I've never had any problems with it. I know for sure this is gonna work. So because of that, I'm just gonna stick, stick it in here. You notice that I'm hand starting all the threads. Don't just start hitting it with a gun. Uh, it is a steel case, but you don't wanna ruin the pumpkin or have one bolt broken or stripped just cause you're in a rush to save 10 seconds. All right, this Milwaukee tool's got a cool setting where it just goes till it's, um, starting to get tight but again I'm gonna go really slow I'm gonna go in like a what you would think is a lug nut pattern so you'll notice I can pull the trigger and as soon as it feels resistance it stops that's a pretty cool setting so you can just kind of That's pretty much it. It is done. If you wanted to torque these, you could. Uh, they need to be a little tighter than that right there, but you can see that the sealant is squishing out nicely, but it's not a big giant glob. Now, some people like to go and wipe that stuff. I would say don't do that. Just leave it alone. Let it do its thing. If you need to install it right away, if you're at the track, do it. If you don't and you can let it sit overnight, even better. Uh, make sure that you know now that we've got it all exposed that nothing falls into the pumpkin. So now is when I'm going to reinstall my drain plug. Because I don't know the condition of this crush washer, I'm actually going to put just a tiny bit of the right stuff here on these threads. It doesn't take much and this is kind of like an overkill step, but whatever. So just kind of smear it in there. Kind of like that. You don't need to do it on all the threads, just maybe at the end. Remember now you're going into aluminum, so you really want to do this pretty gentle. I have that setting on this that I can do, but you don't want to just hit it with full power of an impact. You probably just want to do that by hand. Uh, definitely do that before you put it back in the car. Okay, so I've got the cover on now, but you guys notice I didn't drain and fill the pumpkin. If you have good fluid or expensive fluid in here, you don't have to, you know, you're good to go. But it's a good idea to change the diff fluid at least once a year, or every couple of track days, or maybe every 10 track days, whatever's working on your budget. Now I am gonna drain and fill this myself. However, I'm gonna do it on the car. The way that these work with the fluid level, you're supposed to just fill them in the side fill here until they start to spill out. So I don't really know how much fluid capacity it is. And you know, after you drain it, it you sure you could look it up online, it, but. That doesn't matter. What matters is you fill it until it comes out. So I'm just going to wait until I get it in the car. I'm going to do a full drain and fill it that way. And so that'll be the easiest way for me. You can do it however you want. Some people like to put the fresh stuff in like this. If you do that, make sure you cap the breather vent here because you don't want to spill your new fluid when you go to install it or when it's bouncing around in the back of your truck. <laughs> however you do it is up to you. That's not the point of this video, but I am going to drain and fill it. It's a great idea to do. And it's really not that expensive. I think most diffs take about one quart. So even if your fancy oil is $30 a quart, it's still totally worth it. All right, so there you go. That is all finished up and it's definitely sealed for sure. Now, there are obviously many ways to do this, many ways to skin a cat. So this isn't necessarily the only way. It's just the best method that I've found for myself and I know it for sure works. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something. I appreciate it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. Maybe you can fix your leaky ass diff on your busted drift car and have many more fun laps to come. I'll see you guys on the next one.